Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl Lovely T. And I got my girl Emily in the house. Hey everybody. So it is a lot going on right now. It is so much celebrity tea. So I had just got done posting the whole R. Kelly story about how a mother was basically teaching her daughter how to seduce a grown man like R. Kelly. Well, then I got some extra tea after I posted the video and come to find out That was part of a deposition um, in the courtroom that was not supposed to leak online, but somehow it did. And the people involved in that, that Jane Doe was Asriel Clary and her own mother. That is so sad. I don't know how, as a parent, you could do something like that, how desperate they were for money or for notoriety or whatever it was, the purpose of doing that. It definitely makes a lot of sense as to why Azrael is the way that she is. Like, it makes me feel worse for her, but something about her energy has always been off. And I was kind of thinking it was them, but I wasn't for sure because there's so many victims that he has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, because there were so many victims, a lot of people are like, well, if they're lying and this was a setup, then he should be out. This should be a mistrial. But the problem is they had to sort through all the BS. So even though she was clearly a setup artist by her mother, because she was a minor at the time, her mom encouraged her to go to the concert. They paid for the ticket. You know, she taught her daughter how to seduce him. And the crazy thing is him being so stupid, it actually worked. Because again, yeah. he's just looking for somebody young and quote unquote dumb. And this was a setup from the parents and the whole time. And so that's how she was able to work herself into the inner circle. Most of the newer girls, like I've said from day one, were liars. They were there of their own volition with their parents. Maybe not their own, but their parents' own volition. Um, so a lot of their testimony wasn't even able to be used. It was able to be discredited like Faith Rogers. A lot of her stuff was just tossed out for the most part because they caught her in so many, you know, mistruths. But what really got him was a lot of the older victims. Because remember, when they made that announcement, they said, we want to hear from all R. Kelly victims. It doesn't matter what decade it happened. It doesn't matter if this took place in the 90s and the early 2000s. We want to hear from them all. And those older victims were way more credible. They're right. still- way more believable, like the hair braider. Um, I believe that Spanish girl that was on surviving R. Kelly, the one that had the, that got pregnant, he made her have an abortion or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of those people were way more credible than these newer people who knew about R. Kelly's background, but chose to pursue him. So that's what really sealed the deal for him was a lot of the older cases, not, not, not a lot of these newer girls. But either way, I just think it's a shame and it's really disturbing to see a mother text her daughter those type of things. Yeah, it really is. And as a parent, granted, I have a son, but I mean, just as a parent in general, you're supposed to protect your kid. You're supposed to want the best for them, encourage them to do the best, be their best selves. And that is so disgusting and just makes me so upset and angry at the parents for even allowing that, like just co-signing it, all the bullshit that came along with it. And I don't like how people are trying to use this as an excuse to say, oh, R. Kelly's, you know, he's innocent because, it, no, like you said, he's still guilty. It doesn't matter. She was still 17, but not along, but just along with him being guilty, the parents are too. And I think, like you said, the parents should be charged. That's the same. If you're a pimp, you get charged for being a pimp. That is a pimp. Mm, talk about it. You get, I don't know what the charges are, but there's definitely some charges for being a pimp. That's illegal. And it should be even worse when it's your own damn kid. That's so disgusting and sad. Yeah, because technically that's what they did. They pimped out their daughter for a bag, for attention, for notoriety. They thought, and as Riel can really sing, she's very talented musically. So they Uh thought this was going to be their ticket into the industry. So much so that the father was even, you know, propositioning R. Kelly to, you know, um, basically invest in his musical dildo line. I mean, I don't know what the hell he was thinking about that. (laughs) Who wants the fuck to the beat of a dildo? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe there's somebody out there who wants to, you know, uh, fuck till you remind me of my Jeep. I don't know. But I just thought that you was know, crazy. There's, 
that it, there's so much shit out there nowadays too it's like there ain't nothing new under the sun but a singing dildo okay whatever <laughs> right you know so R. Kelly said, no, I'm not interested in your singing dildo. I'm just interested in your daughter singing on my peen. That's what he was interested in. That's right. Exactly. And then when they got kicked out of the, the equation, that's when they want to go and start crying those tattooed te- tears on these documentaries and shit. And it's like, how can you sit there and cry? And like you said, throw rocks and stuff at the window and all these, you know, theatrics and stuff when you was... The whole thing got set up by you. Can't no 17-year-old fly out and do this and do that without someone paying for it. Exactly. You know, and that's why I feel like there's so many people who have basically been able to just skate away Mm scot-free. You know, there was a lot of adults. There was a lot of enablers. There were a lot of girls who were also themselves recruiters, you know. So it's just really sad that the people who should face consequences, only one person, which R. Kelly definitely deserves to face consequences. Right. But I will always stand with the notion that it wasn't just him and multiple people need to be in jail as well. Right. I agree 100 percent. Yeah, it's a mess out here, you know. So now Joss, Joyce Lynn is um engaged to be married to him. And it's sad because it's like, you know, I, I don't want to say that she's brainwashed because I don't even feel like that's the situation. I feel like she technically really loves him, but it's just sad to see her wasting her youth and her twenties behind this scumbag. Yeah. I hope that, you know, well, he's been locked up for a while, but maybe as time goes on, maybe the she'll start to realize and find herself because I do think that her family, not saying like her entire family, but I think her mom and dad are kind of sketchy. So she doesn't have the support from them. And it's just her and what she's experienced with him. So I'm not a doctor. It does kind of give me Stockholm syndrome tease, Mm -hmm. but you know, but even with that being said, she probably is genuinely in love with them. She's the only one who stuck it out through all that. But maybe as time goes on, she realized and she's more distant from him and she gets older and wiser hopefully it doesn't take too long but she realizes that she's being manipulated and you know I mean there's average people out here that's been with someone for years and they get arrested and they don't hold it down for 30 years so hopefully she doesn't just because of he's just a piece of shit but you know there's no telling that's going to be up to her but I hope she does find herself because she seems to be very lost and she's a beautiful young girl I've never heard her sing I don't know how talented she is but even with that she I'm sure she's a smart young girl she was in college can do more with her life than just you know write letters to R. Kelly Mm -hmm. exactly exactly so now switching subjects there's a lot of mess going on in hip-hop currently with the Gunner situation and the Young Thug situation So for y'all who don't know, there was a nurse, she was a, you know, a jail nurse, a prison nurse, whatever you want to call her. And her job is to, you know, work inside the facility. She's supposed to give, you know, the clients, you know, uh, medication that's prescribed to them. You know, if they get into like a prison yard fight, she's supposed to nurse their wounds and shit. Well, this bitch was doing more than nursing wounds, honey, okay? She done allowed Gunna's ass to talk her into smuggling all types of drugs, um, cocaine, marijuana. And I'm not talking about like a simple baggie or like a little sandwich bag. This bitch was bringing in bricks to the prison. And she got, well, the jail, excuse me. And she got caught. So I'm going to go ahead and play this news clip really quick. I want y'all to listen to this. Medical assistant accused of trying to smuggle drugs into the Fulton County Jail is on the run tonight. Takara Ford faces felony drug charges. Fulton County Sheriff Pat Labatt credits a jail captain with stopping Ford's plan. Fox House Deidre Dukes is live at the jail with the latest on the search for the suspect. Deidre? Well, anyone entering the Fulton County Jail, that means that whether you're a visitor or whether you work here, you must pass through security. But this medical assistant, we are told by the Fulton County Sheriff, ran into trouble as she arrived to work because an employee noted that she smelled like marijuana. And they said when they asked her about it, she admitted that she had smoked pot before she arrived to work. When she got to the security checkpoint, she was acting a little nervous. Fulton County Sheriff Pat Labonte credits a captain at the jail for catching to care for it in the act. After the contract nurse reportedly showed up to work smelling like marijuana. She 
smelled a, a hint of, of marijuana. And she asked, and actually the young lady then said that she had smoked prior to coming to work, which is against all rules and regulations. And we began to search her bag as normal, and she grabbed her keys and ran and walked through the, the parking lot, jumped in her car and left. Ford fled in a black Nissan Altima, Tennessee tag 75A R44. These are images of the illegal contraband deputies say they found in Ford's bag. 6.8 ounces of marijuana, 20 grams of crack cocaine, 200 cigarettes, and two packs of tobacco. Sheriff Lamont says investigators reviewed a recorded phone call between the suspect and other individuals in which it appears she discussed how she would smuggle the drugs. The sheriff says she had worked at the jail for a few months and that all contract employees are screened. We screened all of our contract employees. This just happened to be a, a situation, unfortunately, where I believe the young lady had been influenced by some internal uh, contact. And for us, it is certainly unfortunate to lose a, a, a good nurse, but it is time that she turn herself in. Ford faces several felony charges tonight, including possession with intent to distribute. Y'all just heard the news clip. And so the nurse took off running as if she didn't work there. Like, I'm just going to run for it as if that's not your boss that you're running from. And right. as she's running, she, you know, she dropped notes and shit that she had with her. And on those notes, she literally had names of every, you know, prisoner in there or inmate and what she was supposed to give them. So there were notes saying that there was X amount of, you know, cocaine for Gunna, X amount of, you know, weed for this person, that person. So she was taking notes and she was ready to distribute it. And it's really sad because, again, a lot of these guys, they're already, you know, hooked on drugs and stuff just from being in the industry, you know, rapping, being in the studio all night. So I guess they didn't want to deal with withdrawals. And this could, I refuse to believe that this was her first rodeo. I believe. Oh, absolutely not. What do you think about this? No, there's no way that that was her first time, especially moving in weight like that. Like, I'm wondering, are they trying to do it or are they just trying to make more money? But I do find it very interesting that a lot of times, especially with everything going on with YSL and they're saying, you know, protect the art and stuff like that. But this just goes to show this is a perfect example right now that a lot of stuff that these people talk about in their music is not just them portraying an image. Like even um, Young Thug, they said he was going through serious opiate withdrawals from all the lean that he was doing. And also all these drugs that they're trying to move in, that's clearly something that they want or they need. They're not going to just try to get her to do that just because they're bored. That's something that they're craving, that they're wanting. And I also think that she's crazy as hell for doing it. Yeah. I mean, she basically risked her job, her livelihood, her reputation. And those are some top notch jobs. They're very stressful. Anytime you work in the prison system, you're dealing with a lot of stress and, and trouble. Yeah. Not only I'm sure she's probably dealing with charges of her own, uh, which mm -hmm. would make that difficult to get a job after. But I'm pretty sure her nursing license will be revoked. So all the time and work that she put in going to school and getting her uh, licensing and her certification, all that, all that's out the window. Yeah, all this job. for them. You know, and I think that's the sad part is that she took this penitentiary chance. And really, if they want to, they can also charge her with a RICO because she's yeah. helping people who are defendants in a RICO case. You know, yeah. so it's it's just silly. It's like you, with the RICO charge, if you just happen to take a phone call from somebody with the RICO charge that the feds are looking at, they could tie you in with it. So it's like, why would you involve yourself with people who are in there for RICO charges? One of the most serious charges, because they can they can indict a hamburger like the old saying. Goes. <laughs> I would never, you know, she's an idiot and I just don't know what she was thinking. And she's definitely going to get some time behind this. Um, oh, absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I, honestly, if she works uh, in the jail, I'm pretty sure that she's familiar. You know, I'm not saying like she just knows everything as far as like the law goes, but I'm sure she's seen similar things like this happen. I'm sure she's been exposed to certain situations and stuff like that. I think she knew how serious the consequences were if she gets caught. And then it also makes me wonder. How many other people around here are doing that? Like how many other people around her are participating in that just type of fuck shit to where she felt so comfortable doing it? Right. Because like I said, it wasn't like she had a small baggie. 
And then mm-hmm. and think about what she was bringing in. I could see the Coke because at least cocaine doesn't have a smell. They're just going to quickly sniff it, you know, whatever. But weed, right. really weed. And he's like on lockdown 24 seven because he recently wrote that on um, Instagram that, you know, the only thing he can do, this is what he wrote. He said, 22 and two, just a bed and a shower, no windows, just walls, can't see or talk to anyone. I'm writing now and still praying every day. I was raised to fight fire with water even though my country's amendments have failed me, protect black art. So he posted that on, well, somebody posted it, child, because he's in jail. But uh, <laughs> somebody posted to his 4 million follower Instagram account. So if he's locked up 24-7 and he can't get out to go on the yard, where was he supposed to smoke all this weed? It just you doesn't know, that, make sense. Yeah, and, you know, I do believe in freedom of speech and, um, you know, people being able to rap about what they want or sing about what they want, whatever genre of music. I do believe that people should be able to do that. But I just think that people should take a step back and look at this situation and not just him. A lot of it like Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash song about pills and all kind of stuff like that. And he went through the same thing. He got arrested for pills. He went through detox. So just for people to know that it's not just them portraying an image and that there are consequences for that stuff. Detox and ain't no joke. And I've heard of people who have been in prisons or been in jails and stuff like that. And detoxing in jail is horrible. They don't really do a lot to help you. You just got to sweat it out. You got to shit it out. You got to deal with it. So mm-hmm. it's definitely just something for people to see that even with someone as high of a status as a young thug or a gunna and all the resources and money they had, they're still having to go through that. So it's definitely something to consider before you end up dabbling in the shit that they rap about. Right. Now, what's even crazier is that shortly after this whole drug situation with this cuckoo nurse went viral, um, literally a day later, Gunner was, you know, trying to go back up to see if he could get some type of, um, you know, to get some type of release. And they had denied the motion for a bond. And now it's been reported that basically the reason why he was denied for a bond is because the prosecutors have revealed that Gunner is currently under investigation for two homicides committed by the Shady Park Crips. So let me go ahead and play this audio really quick. New at four, an Atlanta rapper charged in a gang indictment will stay in jail after a judge denied him bond in front of his family and friends. Channel 2's Michael Seiden was inside the courtroom for that hearing. He joins us live now from the Fulton County Jail. And Michael, prosecutors argued there's some religious, rather some serious reasons Gunna should remain in jail. Absolutely, George. You know, Gunna is charged here in Fulton County, but he's actually not being kept at this jail. He is being held right now in Henry County. But today he appeared virtually when that judge denied his bond. None of the allegations made today, these so-called new allegations, are accurate. High-profile criminal defense attorney Steve Sadow speaking with me exclusively just minutes after a Fulton County Superior Court judge denied bond for his client, hip-hop superstar Gunna. We're very disappointed. We thought that we presented enough to show he'd be a good bond risk. Gunna, whose real name is Sergio Kitchens, is one of 28 defendants charged in a sweeping indictment that also accuses fellow rapper Young Thug of being a part of Young Slime Life, or YSL. Prosecutors allege is an Atlanta street gang that committed multiple murders, shootings, and carjackings throughout the city over the last decade. The state didn't show anything specific that suggests that there are acts of violence or threats directly or indirectly for Mr. Kitchens. Gunna, who is only charged with racketeering, appeared virtually today in court. He is a member of the Shady Park Crips out of South Fulton. He is under an investigation at this point in time by more than one law enforcement agency concerning at least two homicides committed by that gang during this time. But Gunna's attorney called those allegations false. In fact, he claims that a witness with knowledge of the gang told prosecutors that the rapper is not affiliated with them. I repeat, not involved in any of the so-called Shady Park Crips matters. All right, so you guys just heard that. So this situation is looking worse for him because now they're really going through everything with the fine tooth comb from the music to the lyrics. You know, I'm sure by now they hauled in what 29 people when this whole thing started. Mm-hmm. Trust me, at least 20 of those 29 are singing like damn canaries telling it all. Oh, absolutely. And you know, um, whenever I 
the whole thing came out. And I remember with Gunna, because, you know, I, I love Gunna. So I was like, man, I hate to hear that. But I was wondering how, how is he being locked up? Because, you know, the, the narrative at first was he just wore a YSL hoodie and he just threw up the YSL signs. And I was thinking there has to be more to it. Yo, what's up? Hey tea sippers, to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.